I'm not sure it's peanut. Shit. Yeah, no, I don't think it's peanut. <laughs> <Fuck. laughs> <laughs> We're back, baby! Sick of this shit. Aaron tried to take my job, you tried to take my fucking job. I'm back. I'm so happy to be back. I've had a lovely holiday slash little COVID period. And I've been watching these boys drink some pretty yummy wines from the couch at home. And now I'm so enthused to get back into it. As always, we've got another six wines. Uh, big thanks to Sometimes Always, always hooking us up with some tasty drops. If you want 10% off any of these, hop in the Discord. You've seen the channel before, you know what's going on. I'm so excited to be back. Let's get into it. Sweet, we're back into it. And we've upgraded this platoon, so no more paint pails anymore. So let's let's do this properly. One number one, we have red wine. It, it's kind of, you know, it's funny, you do this enough, you start to actually look at these things and you just kind of, something just jumps in your head and I'm like, Gamay, looks like Gamay. I wonder if it's Gamay. I have forgotten everything I learned last year about wine, so it's really gonna be back to the base point. I've just been drinking a lot of um, beer and cold Pinot Grigio over the summer period. This is not beer or Pinot Grigio. I reckon this could be a Pinot Noir. Oh, the most perfect cherry. Oh man, that's awesome. And then of course, like little raspberries, some blackberry kind of thing. It's just, you know, that kind of nice summer berry. Killer wine, uh, fantastic. Sitting in that light to medium body category. This is in that sort of like, yeah, Pinot Noir, Gamay, Trousseau, all, all the uh, all that sort of light to medium bodied, very um, uh, brighter, fresher styles. I reckon I could be on here. I reckon that is Pinot Noir. We're in good form this year already. <sighs> We're gonna have to get a new idiot for the show, Lockie. Yeah, I'd drink that all day. That's brilliant. That is a perfect medium weight, great refreshing red wine. Perfect for the climate. Would be great with a chill, great room temp. I'd be interested to see this age. Um, it's just an awesome, fun little drink. It's probably not gonna get to the dozen for me because it's probably not the thing I would wanna see over years and years and years, but I drink it really regularly. All right, wine number two. This looks a little bit interesting. It looks a little bit natty, a little bit cloudy. Doesn't look filtered. Bit of skin contact, maybe. It's got a, almost like a little bit of orange co color coming through on it. It's like apricot bergamot little characters there. But yeah, really hu really honeyed again. Has that Viognier, Chenin Blanc style thing. Uh, definitely like a skin contact aromatic variety of some sort. This is showcasing something that technically is, is quite interesting. So this is like honey, it's like pure honey. Um, it smells, the smell is actually diacetyl. Uh, which is a, um, a little molecule that gets generated from a, um, a stressed malolactic fermentation. Yeah, it smells like it's sort of like yeasty stone fruit, which is something that I wouldn't have said about wine a year ago. Again, nerds. Great. Again, another awesome like sour style of acidity. The, the tannins are a bit more pronounced than it was on the red wine. It's very kind of grainy and granular and really perfectly framed around the core of the wine. Fruit itself is delicious. Um, likes kind of like lemon juice, like fresh squeezed lemon juice. Cracker, yeah, nice. And it's got this great apple-like tannin. You know, like that powderiness when you have, you know, Granny Smith apple it leaves your you know, mouth kind of powdery. That has that in spades. Um, and it's really quite quite appealing. It's really kind of fun. Um, probably go around about 28 bucks. I'd grab 12. Wine number three, another red number. Looks very similar to most red wines, to be honest. Definitely a bit deeper. Has kind of like Pinot Grenache vibes. Uh, of, of really good sort of clarity here. So there's obviously this is either been filtered or just been settled. I think I'm getting the sort of vibe and feeling that it's probably been settled over a, a decent period of time. So already in my head, I'm starting to think of, you know, what sort of winemakers would be uh, willing to, to let their wine have longer elevage or uh, mature for a long time or conversely, um, uh, filter them. When comparing it to the first one, so the first one had a little bit more of like the bright fruity flavors going on. This one I think is a little bit more of that uh, heart, like harsher flavors, like tobacco-y or like ashy or like, yeah, that sort of, yeah. What's making me do and like chew on it a little bit more. It's a more substantial wine. Ripe strawberry on the palate though. And then again, really brilliant tannin structure. Velvety, structured tannin doesn't claw too much in the gums that it takes away from the wine. That wine, that style is great. Good tannic, rustic tannin structure is awesome, but this style of wine is so juicy and fruit forward that you kind of want to drink it now. Yeah, a really solid little wine. This is a wine of just simple, 
easy, fun enjoyment. No qualms about this. Probably spent about 32 bucks and I'd want a dozen. I've grabbed a dozen, 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 man. This could be a clean sweep. Oh, bit darker here again. Kind of a little bit coppery, but mm, interesting color. Kind of goes in many different directions. I look similar to a lot of red wines I've had, but it has a different hue that you can't really obviously see what it is. It's very kind of uh, shy. This could be more Pinot. I probably, I don't know, with one again. Well, because I, we know that I was right with the first one, right? So we know that this is Pinot Noir. So comparing this to that, it's a good measuring stick to have. Sour, bright fruits, as I was saying. Less zippy but still has like the same elements going on for it. So, wow, okay. That's a shift in gears, isn't it? That's a whole bunch, you know. And whole bunch for those uh, at home who, you know, we probably throw around these terms whole bunchy all the time. Like that is when you're fermenting grapes, you're not just stemming them, you're actually fermenting them with the entire whole bunch. You literally just chuck them straight in the fermenter. Oh, this is done really well. This is like, when you're making this as a winemaker, this could really go south really quickly. This hasn't, this has gone, gone really, really well. Yeah, good little wine. Again, nothing I'm gonna write home about, pretty much in the same vibe as the last wine, uh, but a good little structure, great wine making here as well for a definitely a purpose-driven wine that's more for feeding friends and having a really good time, not something that needs to be cellared and be taken very seriously. It's just a very good little Wednesday night kind of wine. Second last wine, number five, we have a white wine and it's, you know, gorgeous, gorgeous thing. Oh, smells gorgeous too. Smells straight straight up. I'm like, yeah, cool, Chardonnay. Looking at it, I'm instantly leaning towards something like Riesling because Riesling quite often you do get this really nice, it's just such a pretty color of wine. Like it's, it's a beautiful color. It's nice and clean and crisp. Really like nearly almondy character underneath this like sea salty lime spray. Oh. Again, not overly complex like some of these wines here earlier. Not an overly complex wine. Very, very, very tension, high acid, moderate oak. I always question whether there's even any oak there at all. I think there is. I do think it's Chardonnay um, with a very, very lean, very, very lean expression. Almost like Chablis, uh, to be honest. Very cool. Cognitive bias, I said it was Riesling before, I think it's Riesling now. No, I'm sticking with it because like, what am I gonna do? Sit here and rationalize that it's actually like a, another variety that I don't know anything about, I don't think so. Spectacular one, absolutely adore that. That is a, um, if that's Chardonnay, I think it is. I've been wrong many times before, but the acidity is brilliant. The oak use and the oxidative handling, if there is any, is fantastic. Uh, the texture is brilliant. Yeah, this great, great kind of this nutty, almondy things and then lots of like awesome like saline, lime zesty drive. Don't really care, I fucking love it. It's excellent wine, it's excellent, excellent wine. Alrighty, finish off with a nice big black number. Cut that out, please. <laughs> <laughs> I broke the streak, Lockie. I broke the streak. 12, 12, 12, 12, and 8. You know, almost, we got there. We almost got there. Whoa, smells awesome, though. It smells like a big boy, too. And that's fantastic. Mmm, that smells delicious. Like, richer. Uh, sort of like the difference between smelling, uh, like, smelling a cherry ripe chocolate bar and then smelling someone's, like, Hey, welcome to my farmer's market. I've actually got a cherry confectionery covered in dark chocolate. Like, it, it, it's like the more natural and richer version of that cherry flavor that you smell in a cherry ripe. Whoa, okay, yeah, definitely more of those kind of really overripe, plummy, dried prunes, fig, sultana, all that kind of thing. Yeah, okay, so we're talking, we're talking blueberry fruit, but not the Grenache kind. I'm not vibing on Grenache here. This screams old school. This screams Bordeaux, like really ripe Cabernet. And I'm not sure if the guys out here have actually seen ripe Cabernet like this, so it'll be fascinating to see where they've uh, sort of landed with this. Uh, again, I'm leaning towards like a Grenache sort of vibe. Uh... Much lighter than I thought it was gonna be. Damn, I thought that was gonna, like, off the nose, I thought that was gonna be sort of like a big bodied red that you'd sort of like sit down and chew on and have like late in the night when you're about to go to bed or you've just had a steak or something like that. But it's much thinner, like the texture of it is much thinner than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, nice peppery character that gives those kind of Cabernet qualities. Fruit underneath is excellent. That'll open up as well. I reckon in time those big bright fruit characters will kind of chill and then this will sell it exemplary well as well. Oh man, big, big, big fan of this one. Yeah, I think this is good Aussie Cabernet, I reckon. Uh, I'm gonna grab a dozen. I'm gonna pay 60 bucks for that. I'm happy with that. Um, 
Yeah, what a treat of a liner. All of those wines were delicious uh, and served different purposes, but we ended really fucking strong with those last, last two wines, and I reckon that the boys and I will be in very similar agreement of these were bloody tasty. Cool, let's get them in. Uh, we're back together. I'm Yay! so happy to be here. Hey! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Reunited and it feels so good. Yeah, um, there was no you... passive aggressive messages in the group chat about <laughs> someone being on holidays for too long or anything. <laughs> Thrilled to be back and great lineup to come back to as well. Like honestly, these were all really cool wines. They, they were got, all I, delicious. I bought so much wine. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly not surprised. I like a lot of wine. <laughs> because <laughs> even the few that I bought uh, less of, they weren't because I didn't think they were fantastic. It's just not something that I have as much use for in my personal life than some of the other ones yeah. that we have in the show. <laughs> these were, I think a lot of these were just drinking wines. They mm. weren't cellar wines or um, like anything too serious. They were just like, I want to drink this. And I want to drink it now. <laughs> Number one, as we tend to do, this for me was like, oh, so glad to be back on this show because this yeah. wine for me was sensational. Um, I had it at 40 bucks and I wanted a dozen of it. 35 and a dozen. Uh, 40 bucks and six. Oh, almost. Uh, so close. what was it, Locke? What do we got? Ooh, oh, right in the slot. Right Bang. in the slot. Don't bowl there. Got? 36 bowl bucks. There, hey! Bink! Oh, Bink. cool. Bink. Yeah. Uh, we've had these guys' wines on the show before. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, um, and we've been massive fans of, uh, so this is Cohen. Coco. Mm -hmm. um, Zinfandel? Like, that's a, that is the most amazing Zinfandel I've tried. In Australia? <laughs> yeah. That's oh my amazing. god. Clay Valley Zinfandel, who would have thought? That's awesome. <laughs> I'd say the vast majority of Zinfandel in the world definitely comes from America. Mm. It's definitely like 16 to 18 percent alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> and definitely doesn't look like Pinot. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's really cool. Wine number two. Yes. Um, Unfiltered, a little bit more natty than, yep. say, the one that we're going to come to later on in the tasting. Yep. Uh, it's not Chardonnay, and that was where I was thinking about it. But I really enjoyed it. Or it is Chardonnay. You guys yeah. are going to tell me I'm wrong. It's. Uh, got, I, have no, I have no idea what it is. It's no. got that honeyed thing. It mm. smells like honey, and that's where I was like, it's got to be the onion, and I'm going to do it again until I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> do it again until I'm right. I, what do we got, Luck? <laughs> oh, uh, luck, we're good at this. Yeah. What okay, good. 30, 38 bucks. What could that be? What do we got? Oh, cool. Riesling! Riesling! <laughs> That's Rizza. Skinsy Riesling. Skinsy Riesling. Stay in your lane. Um, <laughs> wow. Look, at, yeah. the, look so, at the little flex in the bottom of it yeah, as well. Yeah, unfiltered. Uh, so this is Ada. Um, I can't remember his name, uh, but he's the assistant winemaker at Gentlefolk. Wow. Um, okay. So he's been working there for a few years and now I think he's branched off and done his own wines. Uh, I haven't tried any, but this one's a great start. And I think, um, yeah, all the words I've been hearing about this wine have been very, very positive. And of course he's trained under an absolute master hand. So he's gonna pick up some tools of the trade and he's done a bang up job here. Great wine. Cool wine, yeah. Cool wine. Good stuff, yeah. man. That's, that's a contender for the number one of the week. Wine number three. Uh, this one, for me, coming off the back of wine number one, mm -hmm. I thought had some kind of similar elements, but was a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, sort of like that uh, ashy, tobacco-y, like a little bit more of that like harsher flavor profile, like somewhat, but still super light. So for me, I, I was thinking like a light Syrah or something along those lines. Yeah, but much. yeah, we all had it around 30 bucks. You had 12, we had three. So you were a little bit more interested by it. Uh, what do we have, Locke? What's going on? What's the price going is going on. on. The price is goddamn right. <laughs> What's Get going up on? Spin that big wheel for the showcase. What do we got? Grenache. Grenache. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Also, also known as Light Syrah in my head. It's probably not a bad. Not bad. It's generally blended away with Syrah to make it lighter. It's more like Syrah light. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not light Syrah, Syrah light. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, okay, cool. Version. Yeah, Olive Sarango, stalwart of McLaren Vale, always made excellent wine. Um, and it's cool to see them like kind of veering into this lighter shade of Grenache because I've had a few Grenaches from them that have been a bit beefier old and school. old school, yeah. but now they're kind of tailoring back, probably reactive to the market, which is great, but that's a really delicious wine. Yeah. Uh, and for 32 bucks, McLaren Vale Grenache, that's yeah. great. So, right. wine number four. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, awesome. I, I liked it. I liked it as well. Yeah, Those we haven't really seen a whole bunch in a while. You yeah. Know? Decent amount of whole bunch in that. I'm all I'm all for it. What was it? 42. 42. Mm. Yeah, 45. I want to see how much money you've been so far yeah, off. Yeah, honestly, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> it's been crazy. What do we got? Uh, Mac Ball's 11%. Gamay! You're kidding! Gamay, well done, dude! How did, how did you get that? Um, even you yourself admitted that trying to find Gamay in this country at that price point. Well, and it uh, was only moderately yeah, higher. Yeah, moderately higher. But um, Mac Forbes, 11% uh, alcohol. So that's probably the thinness. thinness. It's really bright and early picked. 
Uh, yeah. One of the country's best winemakers, 100%, and this is what he calls his experimental batches. So yeah, it never indeed. makes the same wine again, just like grabs a couple of tons of fruit, makes it around like in a, a cool little style. I think this is all fermented in concrete, which right. is really cool. Um, delicious. Um, yeah. I want to know where the 74 comes from. Oh, that's the 74th, 74th EB that has been made. So it started wow. one, one, and every year they make like a bunch. And yep. then they, the 74th has been released. Uh, wine number five now. Um, yeah, big departure. Yeah, filtered, uh, clean, crisp. Uh, the moment I saw it, I was like, this looks like Riesling. I loved this wine. This wine is epic. Big, big fan. Uh, it's either like a really good Chablis or a really good Riesling. Doesn't matter. It's nutty, it's like mm. uh, almondy, and then that acidity is beautiful. But All right, so how much are we spending on it? 55 bucks. I went 28. I said 45. What? We are, we are, we are split, what do we got? Ooh, Ooh, bargain. Ooh, interesting. That's out of Shambly territory. Shardy. Moustache. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Excellent. I don't know. Why do yeah. I ever not get Shardy? So this is, this is the uh, lower, is it, is it Garage East? Yep. Yeah, Garage East is uh, entry level label? Yep, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Chardonnay of the highest order from an amazing producer in Victoria. Um, yeah, morning, Mornington, Mornington Fruit. That explains the kind of salty yeah. drive there as well. Um, great. For $32, that is exceptional. That's a cracking mm. example. Like, that that could easily be Cru Chablis. Yeah, quite right. easily. Quite Thank easily. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Wine number six. Now, this one, is you were, we were saying off camera and you were like, ah, wine of the lineup for me. And I'm like, I, am, yeah. I am just yeah. enamored. I'm enamored by this wine. I put 45, estimating that it's like an, like I always drop the values, so it's like 45, but it's really an $80 bottle of cabinet. But I hope yeah. it's 45. But I hope it's 45. Yeah, cool. Wishful you know? thinking. Uh, I was not so wishful. I said 60 bucks. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and I'll still buy a dozen because it's excellent. I was extremely wishful and said 25. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it? Mm, 58. 60, mate. Slide. Nailed it. Yeah. Absolutely nailed it. That's got to be Cabernet Territory. No. Syrah. Syrah. Mm, Augier. Uh, it is It is Rhone Syrah. Wow. That's uh, great. Colin Rodenier. I've not uh, encountered before. I wonder whether... Um, oh, no, it is Rhone. It is Rhone. Yeah. Wow. That's an excellent Fucking one. Wow. We said Cabernet that whole time. Syrah. I said Cabernet that whole tasting. Not Cabernet, not even close. Yeah, no, absolutely not. <laughs> opposite side of the country, opposite side of the world. Um, but yeah, that's great. And also, as far as like um, entry level, like Syrah, single, oh. single, single varietal Syrah from the Rhone Valley, at fifty eight dollars, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Because you end up paying upwards of eighty to ninety dollars for like a good example of even like entry, entry crews like. Um, for, um, Freaking Saint Joseph, like you're probably gonna pay 80 bucks anyway, so that's really good value. No, 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 I, no. I would guzzle every single one of these very happily. And there's like a there's like a reason to have each of these, like act because they're delicious is like a good starting point. But Excellent. like good. different times, different situations, all of them are fucking cool wines. Anyway, we're rambling now. I'm happy to give that wine of the week because yep. yeah, Don't. you guys are so impressed by it. What that's a good time. What a, what a lovely <laughs> to have you back in. So good to be back. I was so nervous watching Aaron being like, they're going to fucking replace me. I can see that. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week, guys. Look forward to it.